All right. Uh, welcome everybody to the Kubert SIG storage meeting. Today's June 3rd. Uh, I think we can go ahead and get started at this point. Um, feel free to add any other agenda items to the doc. Uh, but first we have uh, Shelly uh, with a topic about the VM restore webhook. So Shelly, are you ready to take that one? Hi. Uh, yeah, sure. And I see Michael is also here because he's an important part of this uh, topic. Mm -hmm. um, so I have um, an effort of removing uh, different webhooks uh, from Kubert and CDI um, to be more eventual consistent. Um, so, so I have a PR. Uh, about removing from VM restore a uh, check in the webhook um, that makes sure that the VM is running before we can apply the VM restore uh, CR. Um, so this is racy, obviously, because we can we can we could have already stopped the VM, but the VMI have haven't uh, been deleted yet, or or we did stop it and right away started it. So it's a bit racy. So I removed the check from the webhook and um, in the VM restore uh, reconcile in case the VM is running, then we are uh, adding to the conditions of the VM restore that the VM is running and you need to stop it uh, in order to get to the restore to start. Uh, Michael commented about this being um, uh, possibly problematic. Uh, if Michael wants to to present his uh, point of view, he's welcome. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. sorry, is that, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. A couple of things. Uh, first, we have. Um, a little API that's been around for a long time, but just is about to go into beta in the next Qvert release. Um, so just think about that. Um, and that was give my so my first uh, initial response was, well, can we at least give a warning to these users saying, hey, this longstanding, uh, you know, we used to, uh, check that this thing was running and fail, like just a, a heads up to users would be nice for users of this API that has been around for a long time. Um, <clears throat> thinking about it a little more, I just think we can um, maybe do something better than waiting for the VM to be stopped. Um, I guess, I mean, fundamentally, I don't think, so taking a step back, I don't think that snapshots and restores um, kind of fit super nicely into the declarative uh, paradigm. Um, just saying that, like, you, you'll never see, uh, you know, you'll, you'll never see um, snapshot or, or restore in, in probably one of your GitOps repos, they, they're just kind of operations that in my opinion are things you want to happen like now. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, uh, but given that, even if we want to do a fit into this eventual consistent model, I think there are things we can do that are maybe better than waiting for uh, the VM to be stopped. Because I just, again, I, what I don't like is just the restore will happen at some potentially indeterminate time in the future. It requires, you know, user intervention and yeah. Um, so I propose some alternatives, like, um, but thinking about it even more, you know, the 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 existing behavior to me, I think, is more of a relic of a time where um the VM restore had to operate on an existing like VM. And that's not even the case anymore. Like you can restore to a new VM. 
Um, so just just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I, I guess I've proposed some alternatives as far as uh, what would maybe be better. Like the truth is, um, you know, if someone wants to restore a VM, why do we even have to wait for it to be stopped? Why not just force stop it and create a new VM? Or mm -hmm. uh, why not just um, skip, you know, have a skipped phase or market failed because the thing was running? You know, that still fits into the eventual consistent paradigm, I think. And there are a couple other options, but I think. Um, so I just, maybe we can talk about some alternatives. Like, I, I don't know. I just think waiting for the VM to be stopped. I, I, I don't know that that's really the best thing to do. Um, as a reference for like, I don't know if we want to do something similar to what like Valero does when you do a restore, uh, you know, it executes immediately. It doesn't wait. If, if if a resource already exists, it skips it. Uh, otherwise, it create it restores it. Um, so we could do something similar to that now that you know we have um, the fact that you can restore to a, you know the VM doesn't have to exi exist to restore. Mm -hmm. What um, would happen, Michael? Uh, just a quick question on that. What would happen? if you restored a, like a PVC that was in use uh, by the VM, would, would the um, finalizer protect, uh, protect it in, like what would happen? I'm trying to think exactly. Restored a PVC that was in use by so, VM. Yeah, so like we're trying, What I don't know how our code would behave in that situation. We're trying to do a VM restore. Let's just say we allow it to run and Check the PVC um, uh, is not uh, bound, not bound. Um, yeah, that there is not a part that is um, using the PVC. Okay. This is why okay. the well, only well, to work only when the build launcher is down. Okay. Um, the, um, I mean, I think that's an interesting question, especially given the uh, update strategies we have. Um, so I think, say we just, if restore didn't wait for things wait to be stopped. Things stopped. Oh, weird feedback. Weird feedback. I don't know if it's, I'm trying to figure out where that's coming from. Uh, the enclave, uh, it's not muted. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so it's an interesting question. Like we could, uh, change the restore to actually, you know, create the new vol new volumes, update the VM spec and keep it running. And then the next time the, uh, VM restarts, it would just have the new data. Um, that's another option too, but that. Yeah, yeah, that that may be better than waiting for it to uh, to stop. Um, and also, yeah, we're gonna have um, you know hot plug volume support and stuff soon. And I, I mean, some of these changes that we're gonna be restoring will be able to be uh, potentially applied in real time. So you could. Um, do some of that as well potentially i don't know i mean obviously yeah a boot, a boot disc <laughs> so, yeah but um yeah <clears throat> i mean i think it's important to get back to the like um the root of the like the reason that um shelly is looking into this issue which was about uh eventual consistency and and races so i, I do wonder like does the pr solve the race um it's moving the check into the control uh loop i guess instead of the webhook but is it any safer to check it there uh or did it just move the race somewhere else i think the issue here is what michael says 
is that the check is moved to the reconcile, but as soon as the VM is stopped, then the, the restore uh, starts. Mm -hmm. And as Michael said, potentially if so someone did uh, initiated a restore, forgot about it, the VM was running, and the minute he stopped it, then suddenly, after who knows how much time, um, yeah. then the restore occurs. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't know. I I suggested that if someone initiates a restore, then he he makes sure that the restore is actually happening. It's not like you just make a restore and um like forget forget about it. Um, mm -hmm. it yeah, but then why not? Yeah, I don't know. And if like making the restore fail in the reconcile instead. Um, I don't know, it, it's also racy, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, if you check it in the reconcile only once and then you just go to a finalized uh, failed state, then it's also like racy and not so much eventual consistency also, although I don't know. It's in the reconcile and not in the webhook. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the cleanest, if you care about um, potential conflicts and stuff, is user deletes the VM, doesn't stop it, just delete it. And, you know, we restore it when uh, the thing doesn't exist or we skip it like in Valero. Yeah. Uh, we've got the uh, enclave echoing again. I don't... Okay. Um... So I recently saw a, a customer request saying, hey, in, uh, in our competitor, you can restore over a running VM, and that essentially just force stops it and restores it. So... I honestly like that the best, I think. I mean, yeah, I mean, the problem with it is it uh, that's new behavior. Right. So I, I think that we may want to. So I that's where I think we may want to get into adding um, and talk about adding like an API field that can um, give different behaviors, maybe. Mm -hmm. But that still means that we'd be de probably defaulting to some iteration of the current behavior, which, <clears throat> yeah, it's tricky. I don't know. Like, I mean, I guess because we are trying to say on one hand that we're we are removing a check from a webhook, which is in like by definition, it's uh, changing behavior. So we're saying we want to. It's just a matter of like the element of least surprise, I guess. Well, it, it, we're still on alpha, right? So, well, not no, alpha. we're on beta now. No, well, we're in beta we, now. We will be uh, beta the next Qbert release. All right. So. I still think we have a small window to change behavior without too much. Mm -hmm. Very small. Like um, I don't know when they're doing the 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 build, but um, very small. And and for me, doing a a four stop and then restoring when you say, "Hey, I want to restore this," makes most sense in my opinion. But. I would tend to agree, honestly. I do think it's like if you post that object, that you're con you're communicating an intent. So if we say that, yeah, if we say that restoring involves powering off the VM, it should be done. Now, do we start it back up again if it was running? Um, I don't know, but yeah, I would say we pr uh, my. Inclination would be to preserve whatever the run strategy was. Yeah.
So, yeah, like Alexander said, I, I think we have a small window. <laughs> if if we want to um, uh, change it, we have to come up with something soon. Mm -hmm. Well, Shelley, what do you think of, of that suggestion? Of uh, for stopping the VM, um, yeah, yeah, it uh, like it does make sense, although it might be a bit uh, like restore is um, uh, is uh, somewhat not like you can't go back, um, so if you did it, uh, it's done deal in the UI, mm. we do have some mm. protection. Uh, of are you sure you want to restore? Um, so, and and basically, yeah, if you like the issue is the small problem is that if you didn't intend to do the restore, um, you put the wrong VM name, then yeah, it's uh, for me pretty much game over. Mm -hmm. Um, and and if this is a, like a really big surprise to a user. Um... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they would have, in, in, in your scenario, they would have gotten lucky if the VM was still running and they'd have a chance to, well, they they would, yeah, they would get, it would re get rejected and they'd say, oops, yeah, wrong VM name. So, um, so um... yeah, yeah, maybe it's like, yeah. Um, so I wonder would it, so be wonder worth, would it be worth um, like sending a note to the Kubevert dev? Do you think we would get any additional feedback there uh, about changing this? It might be worth at least sending, like uh, giving folks an opportunity to weigh in. Otherwise we might just, you know, those of us who Oh, and the feature can make the choice on on its future, but like it might be nice to. So, um, just a heads up on the on the API. Uh, so, I think that um, although we are, um, you know, bringing the snapshot API to beta, um, I think we're going to move very quickly. You know, I've been talking to Fabian about it to GA GAing it because it's been around for so long. Mm -hmm. So, um, during this hopefully short beta period, we can, you know, change the behavior and then, you know, have something for GA. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I think we should tr avoid rushing into it. I don't know if it's to the level of a feature proposal, but we could, you know, I think it would be worth trying to get some discussion, bringing additional people into it, um, you know, for those who aren't able to attend the call. Um, but for me, it's kind of making sense that it should be uh, an immediate restore. Like we should just do whatever we can within our power to enact their wish. And again, yeah, I think that just the fact of waiting for it to be stopped is, I think, like mostly a relic of we only restored to like existing VMs, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but so, what about um, mm. Yeah, may maybe the right thing to do is to wait for the VM to be deleted. That is like the most. Uh, yeah, I mean, to, to... Whole thing. Yeah, I mean, to a user like what I don't know what the difference between stopping and deleting a VM is. You know, because um... you said that. It, it might be a surprise if suddenly someone stopped the VM and it restored because you initiated the, the restore and then it got to the reconcile and was forgotten. 
and suddenly you stop the VM and it restores. But if you delete the VM and then it restores, it's it might be less harmful because you ah oh oops I restored it although I deleted it then I'll just delete it again. Comparing to I just stopped it and suddenly it restored unintentionally and I can't um, get my data back. I mean, for me, I'm, delete has a connotation that's a little scarier. So like if you told me I had to delete this really important VM that I cared enough about that I'm trying to restore content from a backup, but you're like, wait, I have to delete it. That doesn't like to me, I would be confused by that. And I would like triple check it and be worried that I was going to lose data. It would be like a really anxiety inducing uh, API mm -hmm. to call for me. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, it is it is that is like the Valero way though, you know. Okay. But yeah. And I don't know, we should document if we don't already, like, hey, would be wise to do a snapshot before you do a restore. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we're um not sure if we edit it in the UI at least, but uh Um, so to conclude, <laughs> we're <laughs> suggesting a possibly like important change in the API. So possibly we want to have it in the Cuba community meeting and to raise it there. So uh, um, yeah, there's the SIG API meeting. Um... Sending a note to Kubert Dev may be a good idea. Yeah, that's probably the good first step, and then you can point. You could point to that email when you introduce it in um, in the call. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying, I think that, that the feature freeze in it is this week or just pretty soon, like a week from now. I, I, guess. I think it's like yeah. I think it's maybe next Monday or. Something. Yeah. Sometime next week. Um, so it's not realistic to to get this done by the then. Are this Wednesday and Thursday, I think. Um, and then need to see what are the changes that are um, accepted there. Yeah, so I mean, I think it's going to be, uh, there'll be at least one release between release. beta and GA. So if we just beta with the current behavior and then uh, discuss this for whatever amount of time it takes to get it right, we don't want to make a mistake, um, then the change could go in on the subsequent keyword release. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. Yeah, cool. All right. Sounds good. Anything else on this topic? If not, we can look at uh, issues. OK, so add S390 cross build libraries. And it seems we're not, uh, so far, no comments on it. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm just reading this. Um, I thought there was a PR for this, but I guess not. Hmm. Okay. So, so Lang doesn't support cross compile to uh, natively for this. Yeah, I guess we just don't, we're not building natively for S390. Um, let's see. Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I think they just need some help deciding if we want to go cube verts way, or if we want to go like the arm way that we have in CDI. I would say the arm way just to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would be, and that is this what's being suggested here then, I guess, right? I'm confused a little bit. Um, yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the yeah, uh, whether the support should be statically built into the builder container or should be installed on the fly. Yeah, okay. So this is installing on the fly. All right. So what's uh <clears throat> what's the next step here? I guess I think that <clears throat> I mean we don't need to i think he seems capable of doing the the support like kind of adding things so i think he just needs a an opinion from the maintainers for this so like i guess Since yeah this is part of the docker file looks like it's the builders so i'm not quite sure what they mean by on the fly because it's built in when the builder is built So you're doing from the builder container and then you are running this stuff first. Uh, this is, and then the build uh, oh, okay. yeah. after it. Gotcha. So that's the on the fly part. Like every build will install uh, these packages instead of when you pull the image, they're installed. So, I mean, I think it would be interesting to understand what how it compares to the kubevert method and see if we prefer to follow their example or continue down our own road. Um, it's kind of a lot of, uh, I mean, it's going to make the build a bit longer here. Right, because every time it'll install the... Yep. And also, I don't know if Apple is like a stable. Well, just like if that's uh, causes additional problems with like signing, like package signing or anything like that, that would become important. So that's something to consider. I mean, there's some uh, potential differences there between. Um, the, you know, like the Kubevert builds and the Red Hat builds is kind of what I'm thinking too. So we need to consider that. Um, so I guess it seems like this is probably something good to assign to uh, CDI maintainer to kind of help make a decision on. Yeah, I guess I can take a look at it because I've been been helping them for a while now. So. Okay, thanks. All right, um, so let's pop back up. So this was number thirty two eighty nine, which was the top one. So, uh, was there any other issues that we should look at? So we've had comments on these last ones, the one of, about the MVD kit error and the data volume failure when cloning, but I'm not too sure if they are uh, really relevant to discuss here, but uh, we could take a look. Uh, did I get it right? Is this the one? Yeah. 3259, okay. So just to refresh my memory. I think that one turned out to be their stuff. Yeah, I think I left a comment on there. Um, they were using Ceph installed by Rook and uh, 
with oh, the yeah. Seth, with the Seth and Kiefer CI. It worked fine, and then they confirmed that, and then they reopened it because they changed some storage class parameters. Uh, yes. You scroll down. And I said, well, you, you made an invalid, invalid um, config there. Like, oh, OK. <laughs> so. Yeah, it seems like we should probably close this. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like, yeah, you can't. Like something was up with their, you know, we couldn't reproduce it with the Kubert CI default config then basically copied the storage class parameters from like a totally different installation configuration and said, oh, it's broken again. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else that we should look at today? Maybe there's also this MVD kit one, the second to last one. Well, the second to first, sorry. not initialize ref count handling well the http server is mini yo which wasn't supporting bike ranges i think that was the original issue okay but then they have a, a, a different issue after they updated mini yo that apparently does support bike ranges I'm a little confused as to what their current issue is. Uh, oh, yeah, their their uh, import takes really really long. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and they're using CDI like one forty one or something like that. So, and what's the workaround again? Uh, basically, uh, putting in a fake certificate. Which then forces it to bypass MBD kit. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it seems that uh, Alexander, you've given them something to try, and we're now waiting on a on a response from them. So I think that this is in a good state. All right. So anything else on the issue side? No, that I am aware of. Okay. So I'll pop back and check any other uh, topics or open floor items, questions, comments, anything like that before we wrap up today. Alex, did we want to talk about the progress reporting fixes or? Uh, yeah, we brought it up in one of the meetings before. Oh, we have a thread about it. So uh, we summarize. Um, basically, we for now the PR goes with uh, reporting all the way up until the last heartbeat before hundred, and it just um, naturally goes to hundred when when the pod exits with a green exit code, so zero. So you get like a ninety nine situation, you know, like when you. Uh, download a file and I don't know like I remember this pattern from old programs where you download mm -hmm. a file and then the flushing to disk is like a separate step on its own yeah so uh this is the current revision of the PR we had like a uh, couple of folks who were okay with it the other solution would be like an 80 20 kind of thing which is to me, kind of the same 
really like it you don't like i think in a mo in most cases it's not really a 20 that less step is really a one percent in most mm -hmm. cases but yeah so is uh, it pr is still is, up is it possible to actually monitor the progress of that convert step that second step yeah yeah okay it is yeah. it's possible okay yeah okay I mean, I think that we, we could we need some way to represent that then, right? If we have separate steps. Yeah, I think the issue is that we're only representing that convert step now. So oh no, it the, goes the from PR, only the download. Only the download. Yeah, the PR that it's up will represent the download, and it would just hold back from reporting a hundred to respect the convert slash resize slash. Uh, whatever other steps we do post yeah, download. No, I was just complaining that, uh, explaining the situation before the PR. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, correct. Before the PR, we, we don't see the in, import to the scratch space, but we see the convert phase. And, and in Windows, it may take like 10 minutes, but um, no, maybe not 10 minutes, sorry. It may take more than a minute, like mi minute and something. Um, and we see the progress. Yeah, I, I, I think the convert may be underestimating a bit, it a bit, especially for cases with pre-allocation. Um, right. I mean, we could make that we could make that uh, a constant. Like you, right now, it's essentially set to. Uh, <clears throat> you know, 1%, but you could set it to 20%, you could set it to 15, five, um, just depends on, you know, it sounds like, you know, you could do it that way, that may be over engineering a bit. Um, you know, the the most thorough solution would be to, um, to, to track for typical imports, what the split is, and then model that, but um, that maybe is a little overkill too. Yeah, the problem is that we have the we just have a progress field. I mm -hmm. think like the most thorough solution would be to have a separate uh, phase, separate uh, yeah. progress for that second part, which deserves its own reporting. Yeah, we used to have uh, this kind of like some uh, some issues for this, but. Um... I think we kind of just close them just there's a lot of other like probably more beneficial ways to spend our development time uh, than getting this to be super accurate. Yeah, anyway, the PR is open and uh, we had a metrics uh, issue on top of the real progress not being reported. So that was fixed by our non, and that's merged. So uh, we're all good to review and uh, get those iterations going. So I'll post the PR here in the chat. All right, cool. All right, any other topics? All right, I'm not hearing any. So in that case, uh, let's wrap it up for this week. And uh, we'll see you guys at the next SIG storage call. Thanks, everyone, for the discussion and participation. Have a good week. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.